damn it, how long have we been doing this show? The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life, it's episode 380, we're in the final week of July of 2024, and we're back on the program. I'm Ethan. Welcome back, Crab fans, I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things I can't talk about, or we can't talk about, we're out of practice, it's been a week, on the first and only wrestling podcast. WWE is on the road to SummerSlam, which is one week from Saturday. We're back to that ridiculous verbiage. <laughs> uh, that's one week from Saturday in Cleveland. Uh, AEW is building to Wembley Stadium and all in. And uh, WWE is uh, Uncle Nick and uh, Uncle Nick Khan and uh, Paul Beck, the pencil pushers, are in London trying to get uh, WrestleMania in London. They're meeting with the mayor of London, whose name escapes me. It's definitely not Boris Johnson or Lonnie Donegan. <laughs> I believe it's Sadiq but, Khan, uh, is it not? Uh, sure, why not? And uh, yeah, so uh, they took a line from a John Cena promo, and it definitely doesn't have anything to do with the fact that uh, their competition in the wrestling industry has decided to start running Wembley Stadium every year. Yeah, I, I guess it's just a matter of uh, whether or not London's going to fork up the dough. That's how that's how these things go now. They uh, municipalities bid on them. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, it's a different it's a totally different world. That, Absolutely, uh, that we're living in here today. So uh, WrestleMania in London seems, uh, if they will. Uh, poning up the cash, we'll get a WrestleMania in London. Um, I will not be going. Um, and they're uh, they're building SummerSlam at the big uh, Gunther versus Damian Priest match, and CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre. Punk finally cleared, and Seth Rollins is the guest referee in that match. And uh, Sami Zayn defending the Intercontinental Championship against Braun Breaker, who uh, he beat clean as a sheet at the last pay per view. <laughs> and Bailey versus Nia Jax uh, for the WWE Women's Championship. And we are on the road to Liv Morgan versus Rhea Ripley for the Women's World Championship. And. Uh, just how are you feeling? Cody Rhodes versus Solo Sokoa for the undisputed WWE Championship. Um, so we have more than uh, five matches announced for the show. Um, so it, it may be more than the typical three hour uh, uh, WWE pay per view of, of late. Uh, I forgot to mention. Uh, Logan Paul versus LA Knight for the United States Championship. Mm -hmm. So we have seven matches set for that show. Uh, what are your thoughts on the build of SummerSlam so far? I think it's uh, fine. <laughs> I, I like most of what they've done that involves Jacob Fatu as far as setting up the Cody solo match. Jacob uh, Fatu should be uh, wrestling for the World Championship. He should. And I think they'll figure that out sooner rather than later. But, um, you know, they've done the things you should do if you're trying. If you are determined to do solo versus Cody, then they've done the right thing. Solo pinned him. They're getting over the th they've gotten over the thumb. He's laying out Cody on every show. Uh, you know, you always have the fact that even if you don't really believe that he could win, you could see all of the other bloodline guys getting involved to cost Cody the belt. So there is at least some, I think it's gone from like zero percent that anyone would believe that Solo Sokoa could win the world's championship to maybe like a solid five, solid five percent that Solo Sokoa could win the world's championship. But um, I think generally that's been that's been pretty effective. Um. Uh, other than that, Bailey versus uh, Naya, a match that has gotten progressively worse every time they've done it since the original time in NXT. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. 
see what kind of worker Pam is in uh, in 2024, I guess. And N- Naya is uh, is a wonderful wrestling character who mm-hmm. can't do who can't do a damn thing in the ring. <laughs> and yes. uh, as we maybe have talked about on the air, I forget. Uh, there's an element of danger to her matches mm-hmm. that, that just doesn't exist in in modern wrestling anymore. That's true. So there is that that little bit of excitement when uh, when there's an Nia Jax match. So uh, that that'll be perversely entertaining. And you've got Tiffany with the briefcase, so they can tease more of that. Whatever they're going to do there. Um, uh, Logan and L.A. Knight. Sure. <laughs> People, pe- it's it. They're giving L.A. Knight something to sink his teeth into, and he is over enough on the show to warrant that. So good for him. Uh, Sammy and Brown. Dumb, because you sh- they should have just had Brown win the belt last month. Without question. Uh, especially because he's just back to killing dudes every week. It's not like you're you uh, you know you're you press the reset button and you're going to build him up as a you know a humble different character. No, he's just still an unstoppable killer. He just lost. He's just now he's an unstoppable killer who was stopped once a month ago, right for no reason. Um. In a different era, that would matter, but it doesn't now. So, except for me, it it makes me mad. But uh, that's just how Paul books to make me mad. They so. they are really uh, pounding home the branding that Braun Breaker is quote an unpredictable badass <laughs> unquote. Sure, yeah, makes sense. Um, so yeah, there's. I mean, the undercard looks looks fine, and then they've uh they're doing they're doing a little fun little dog whistling with the uh the Gunther and uh Damian Priest. I forgot the world champion. <laughs> Lonnie down again. Lonnie uh, down again, I believe. Correct, correct. Uh, they're doing uh some some dog whistling with that feud to try to I guess get people more invested <laughs> in a match that no one could possibly care about. So Gunther is repeatedly referring to Damian Priest as street trash, mm-hmm. um, which in in this storyline, uh, as you mentioned, the dog whistle, um, that's uh, it's a it's a placeholder for slurs, right? Correct, correct. <laughs> I mean, we've talked about it. The, the <laughs> Gunther gimmick is like. We're really kind of always on the edge just based on like the iconography used and the general demeanor of the character and the marching and the music and all of that. So like you're already kind of on the borderline anyway. And then you have him doing this stuff and it's like, ooh, I wonder if we'll be saying we'll just be flat out saying the words when we're on Netflix in six months. Um, But no, Uh, look, they're trying. They're trying. Crowd popped when Damien went out there and punched him in the face this week. So maybe it'll have a little bit more heat than this match otherwise would. I would suggest that they do more of that and less of uh, of um, I look. Gun- Gunther's great. Gunther's great at everything and his promos. Um, I'm sure it's not his idea to call Priest quote unquote common street trash, and he's just doing as he's told. Uh, but uh, we need more uh, things that are going to get Damian Priest over and uh, fewer things <laughs> that are dog whistling to Nazis. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Agreed on all counts. Uh, even if Damien is just kind of going to SummerSlam to hand this belt to Gunther. Yeah. As people seem to suspect, uh, you still probably want to have him as a character on your show after he loses the belt. And so maybe you shouldn't, do a storyline where the guy is a the guy he's wrestling is a racist dick and then beats his ass and takes his belt. Maybe that's yeah. a bad storyline if you want this guy to be a baby face. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you there. Um Priest is gonna be a baby face. I'm not sure if he's all that over. Uh talked about this maybe week week to week on the show, but I, I Damian Priest might be over a little bit. To me, he's not anywhere near over to the level of top star on a brand. Mm-mm. And uh, I don't know if this is going to help. And if the idea is like he and Rhea become baby faces 
out of whatever's going on with the Judgment Day. Um, I just, I, I don't know. He's dwarfed. He's in the same segments with Rhea Ripley often. And her charisma and the crowd's reaction to her dwarf his. And it's uh, it's just a bad look. But uh, Liv Morgan versus Rhea Ripley. Uh, Liv Morgan, her character, as Michael Cole would say, is a very sexy baby. <laughs> and Liv and Rhea is kind of like the top angle on Raw. And everyone in this angle is in six segments on every show. Yep. And uh, it's not for me, but apparently people 18 to 34 really enjoy it. And uh, we're doing Liv and Rhea for the Women's World Championship. I presume Rhea is just going to kill Liv in like... Um, well... It... <laughs> I think it's costing Rhea the match, personally. Y- yeah, I mean, that's like Rhea's going to kill Liv for three minutes and then mm-hmm. Dom, Dom, I don't know, low, can't low blow Rhea Ripley. I don't well, know. What he, she'll do. like go off the ropes and he'll grab her ankle or something. Yeah, and that'll be it. Uh, I I don't know. This, this seems to be the thing driving Raw, and uh, it's not for me, but people seem to be enjoying it. So who am I to stand in their way? Yeah, uh, I don't know. They're they're trying. They're it, at least it's a match. At least it's leading to a wrestling match. I have had to watch Liv Morgan try to seduce Dominic Mysterio for like three full months now, and it's not once led to a wrestling match. <laughs> so now this is finally leading to a wrestling match. So <laughs> we're making progress incrementally because it's, it's like. It can't lead to a wrestling match because it's a guy and a girl, <laughs> right? <laughs> which, which brings to mind a uh, a a um, a a story that I heard Paul McCartney tell one time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's talking about uh, how somebody was asking him about uh, John Lennon and their friendship, and like, you know, there's a lot of history there, but. Uh, um, Paul goes, yeah, I listened to uh, I listened to John's uh, one of John's solo albums, and I felt like one of his songs was about me. But that's okay. We knew we loved each other. We just didn't say it because you know we weren't we weren't a guy and a girl, or <laughs> we weren't two girls. We're two guys, and that's just how it was at the time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So he and uh, he and John Lennon used to communicate through their albums. Oh. That's honestly a beautiful and very tragic story. <laughs> I'm not sure quite how that relates to what we were just talking about, but it is a lovely story. Because uh, they're two guys. Okay, but Liv and Dominic are a guy and a girl. Uh, I, exactly. I, I see, okay, I see. I see. All right. Come uh, on. It says, Anne is the nose on Plane's face. <laughs> Oh, beautiful. Well, that was a wonderful story. I hate the storyline. I hope it ends at (laughs) SummerSlam, but it'll probably get dragged out for several more months because, as you mentioned, uh, I am very much in the minority on hating this and people seem to like it. So, uh, yeah, you got to do the next twist. I guess I guess Rhea will once Dom does the term, then Rhea has to get a new man and then they'll they could do mixed tags or something. I mean, priest priest becomes the man at that point, right? I guess so. Particularly if he's losing in the world title. Yeah, yeah, that's probably the move. I don't think you can do priest and Rhea romantically, though. They've kind of been hinting at Jey Uso, actually. Oh, and... that's true. Yeah, and he doesn't really have anything to do right now, so except the thing that they should do, which is reunite with Jimmy when he gets back. Yeah, that should uh, that should probably take place sooner than later. Uh, the other match on the show we've talked about in passing is CM Punk and Drew McIntyre with Seth Rollins as the guest referee. This is Punk um, uh, fantasy booking 1997 Bret Hart. And uh, complete with his next program as his referee. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Um, it's the hottest thing on the show. Uh not involving with Morgan and Dominic Mysterio and Rhea Ripley. 
Uh, and it's been going on for months and months and months, and they've done the same angle repeatedly. So uh, I think it's going to be great. And uh, it, it'll be nice to finally get the match in the ring. And we'll see what Punk has. Yeah, it's, I mean, he, I mean, I guess it hasn't been that, that long. It's, I guess, about a year, actually. <laughs> yes, we'll get to when we talk about Wembley stuff soon. But it's been a while since he was regularly working, uh, you know, long singles matches. So it'll be interesting coming off an injury, what kind of shape he's in. Uh, I don't, I don't want Seth in this. I don't, I don't want him. Like, I want him to go hmm. away. Uh, hmm. I would like, I just feel like you spent so much time building up this Drew and Punk feud. And before you even have even done the first match, you are already building Punk's next program. Which, if I were Drew, I would be upset by that. But um, I don't know. I get, like I said, it'll it'll bleed into things coming out of that show. You do depending on what you do with the finish. You could do Seth versus Punk. You do Seth versus Drew. You could do a three way. You could do whatever you want. So I get why he's there, and also because they. <laughs> They just didn't book him in anything else. They didn't find anyone else for him to feud with for this month. Um, and I guess they didn't want to do a three-way for the world title. So uh, it's fine. It's they, just, they also have three injured guys that they're trying to baby <laughs> in Punk, Drew, and Seth mm, that have true. all been all been uh, involved in the same storyline for six months. Correct. Uh, so I don't know. All right, CM Punk uh, managed to leak some contract information this week. <laughs> he no, said it didn't come from Punk's side. Punk right. famously never leaks anything. Sure. So there's a story that came out uh, that Punk was trying to renegotiate his deal uh, for longer because he had originally signed a three year deal. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wanted a longer deal. Because he wants to be, he wants the Kota Ibushi New Japan deal where he just signed forever. Mm -hmm. And uh, Punk wanted, like, you know, some kind of three years in the ring and then I start running NXT thing provision or something in the contract. I'm like, I know Sean's getting up there, but is he, is he going to be gone in three years? Sean's like 59 or something, right? Did I he mean, just turned 60. Is, is this year 60 or 59? He just had his birthday the other day. We're going to look this up, but you can keep talking while I look it up. Um, but yeah, he was then a quick to make a passive aggressive post on social media, noting that he's Sean just turned 59. OK, 59. so I'm uh, shocking. I'm right. Um, about someone's age. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so then Punk started posting on Instagram stories about how, uh, uh, I don't know, posting like a, a teenage girl on MySpace in 2005 uh, about how, uh, I, I don't even know. I don't even know what he's doing here. Uh, he has no leverage. And uh, oh, he he managed to get out that, uh, oh, actually, I didn't approach WWE about an extension. They approached me. Mm -hmm. I think that that came out here. It's not, and it probably has nothing to do with him maybe being upset about how much money Drew McIntyre is being paid after his new deal. Well, there you go. Uh, seen a lot of scuttlebutt about this online this week, and people say, oh, it's the first step. He's unhappy. I don't think he's unhappy. He might be trying to angle for more money, but... um. This sounds like he's uh he could be a little manic and um he's on uh he's having a uh, a manic episode uh, uh, on the high end though yeah and, and um he we know we know he loves NXT <laughs> and he loves hanging out with all of the 22 year old women at the performance center yeah yeah he sure he's just he's so giving you know um, no, I, and to your to your point, that is a fair that is a fair thing to say. N trying to negotiate so that you make more money or that you have longer term financial security does not mean you're 
steaming mad and you're furious and you're throwing things and you're ready to walk out the door if you don't get what you want. Probably just looking around going like, oh, well, when I sign, this is what I was told the going rate is. And now other people are signing for more than that. And so I'd like to restructure my deal and maybe see if I can get a little bit more. I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. It's just it's the negotiating in the in the in the in the public right and it's and the, it's the fact that it's this guy <laughs> it's this guy and famously <laughs> this guy uh gets a little bit upset if he doesn't think if he thinks his his money is being affected so yeah i <laughs> there's nothing wrong there's nothing wrong with trying to negotiate a better deal for yourself doesn't mean he's being a jerk to anyone backstage or has any personal problems with anybody in the company executives or other wrestlers just just he's just trying but <laughs> if that were the case wouldn't be surprising <laughs> no this is what we like to call vintage phil <laughs> he's he's uh he's just negotiating and leaking and uh allegedly and that that's what the guy does um the problem here though is that drew like went through i i think totally unintentionally by the way drew got his new deal through Dwayne's people uh-huh. <laughs> through, through the Dwayne ari emmanuel pipeline the people that actually are running the company <laughs> mm-hmm Dwayne, Nick Khan, uh, yeah. So I'm sure Punk is talking to Nick Khan about this, or Nick Khan's team is talking to Punk about this. The problem though is, if you want that Drew money, you uh, you best go, you best go through Dwayne. And uh, I would imagine that those those two will. Uh, I, I would imagine this ends well. <laughs> I would imagine this ends well. <laughs> I see no potential future well, problems here. You can imagine at the very least Dwayne and Phil would have something to bond over, which is that they both currently have to publicly pretend that they don't fucking hate Paul Levesque. Sure. So, you know, they have something to bond over when they uh, when they meet. Well, they can't meet over a, a, a glass of Terramata tequila <laughs> over a glass <laughs> of Voss water. <laughs> They'll meet in the shower over a bottle of Papa Tui. <laughs> there you go. In the, oh, in the lather communal, one another up. The communal WWF shower. One will use sandalwood suede. <laughs> the other will use cedar sport. Uh huh. Uh huh. Get a good lather going, and we'll talk turkey. Exactly. Exactly. It's all fine, and everyone always gets along in wrestling, and there's no problems. No, it's great. All right. Well, we're being a little bit facetious there, but also, I mean, punk and uh, punk and rock work together. Rock had his number in his phone and called him in live <laughs> in, in in a live arena once. That's right. Remember that? Yeah, they were it's filming like, Paige's movie. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure they're fine. But, like, but punk needs to know he's not negotiating with the right guy. I don't think. Yeah, that's fair. All right, AEW. They had their blood and guts show this week. Well, as uh, as our bridge, can we mention that Drew and Jungle Jack took a, took a picture together today? Yeah, that's actually a really good pod by you and really bad pod by me. <laughs> so Drew McIntyre posted a photo with uh, Jungle Jack Perry on social media on Thursday this week and said, uh, it's a real picture. Go cry us a river. Uh, and then uh, took it down. So someone told Drew not to post photos with the Jungle Boy. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure who that person would be. Seems like probably, um, yeah, I don't know. But uh, hey, if do you think Punk got actually mad about it? I hope so. <laughs> Just because, not because I really, I don't wish. I, that's a, that would be a lie. Uh, I don't. I was gonna say I don't wish for Punk to blow up again, but that's no, not true. You, you, we all want it. Don't you, lie to me and tell me you would rather see him have wrestling matches. You want to see him throw a fit and publicly disparage his employer. Be- only because 
his wrestling matches have been pretty shite. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a few years since he had a good one. But he, I mean, he just can't. He can't work the two thousand the two thousand four indie guy style anymore. Right. He's 40, 45 years old. Totally understandable. I mean, it's the problem that all those guys are running into. It, it, the ones that are still going, mm-hmm. so, uh, the guys that can still work that style are, I think, Roddy Strong, mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe Danielson, occasionally, although right. he seems to get hurt every big match. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Joe works different. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, yeah. So there you go. Yeah, nothing wrong with it. Just I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, but when I saw that, I was like, well, either Punk actually got mad or. Yeah. Some but like Nick Khan or Paul or whoever thinks Punk will get mad about that. And right. so they took it down. Right. It's like there has to have been a photo of a WWE and an AEW person together at something at some point. I mean, Rhea Ripley and Buddy Murphy post photos together all the time. There was a photo of Pam and Mercedes with their WWE and TBS belts. Uh, a week ago, right? So it's not as if there's like a no, no photos with wrestlers not under contract policy or something. I mean, just common sense would tell you, you know, I probably shouldn't be, <laughs> I probably shouldn't do this. <laughs> but if you're Drew, are you like, what's he gonna? If he quit, he can't <laughs> quit. <laughs> He's. He... <laughs> He has he does not have the financial ability to quit the World Wrestling Federation currently. Guy's so, got he's got several houses. Correct. He just bought a three million dollar house in California a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so if it's a you're very Drew, nice house. If you're Drew, and maybe you feel like you were outshined a little bit because of a special referee that was made this week. Now I'm really just getting into fan fiction here, admittedly. That's fine. But, but I'm like, <laughs> well, people are talking about Drew. <laughs> a lot of people talking about Drew. A lot of excitement and buzz around Drew. Uh, and maybe pissing off the old the old Phil Meister is, is worth it for just the uh, the buzz, even if there was a good chance that, like I said, either he got mad or people think he will get mad. And so they took it down. Maybe it... Phil is concerned that it will uh, affect his still, I'm sure, impending potential litigation against AEW, you know? So, we don't know. But we w- we'll never know the reason, I guess. But uh, what a what a wonderful couple of hours on uh, on X, the site formerly known as Twitter. I, uh, I was totally unaware of all of this. And you're like, I hope uh, you sent me a message and said, I hope that uh, that punk got shoot mad and made him delete the picture or there. I want to know who fa- who made Drew delete the picture was something mm-hmm. along the lines of what you yes. said. And I was like, I have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> then, oh, there's the jungle boy and there's DM hunk. <laughs> what do you know about that? Drew also mentioned Colt Cabana on Twitter this week. <laughs> So he's he really, he's really needling the man this week. <laughs> you can't stop Drew McIntyre. You can only hope to contain him. Uh, yep. So we'll see. These are pros. They are professionals. Would not be the first time that uh, <laughs> CM Punk took offense, but I assume. But uh, I assume everything is copacetic here. Yeah, like it's 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 great if it's you know if it's at work that's even better because it shows a certain self awareness that I wasn't quite sure that Phil had if he's like yeah no needle me over that needle me over this like or at least giving like the thumbs up when when the idea is given to him but right but yeah. yeah it's fun either way <laughs> either way I win as far as I'm concerned. Sure. I mean, you just always root for whatever's funniest. And the funniest thing would definitely would be uh, Drew is actually needling it. Yeah, I think that would be the funniest thing. AW Blood and Guts. Uh, that was a program that uh, aired this week on television. Mm-hmm. And uh, Team AEW beat Team Elite. Team Elite uh, 
finish came with Darby Allen handcuffed Jack Perry to the cage, doused him in gasoline, and then extorted both the submission and a TNT title match out of uh, Matt Jackson. <laughs> out of it. Uh, typical, uh, I mean, just, I don't know. I'm the wrong person to ask what I thought what I thought of this match, so I'll ask you, what did you think of this match? Um I just wish that one company that did a cage with a roof on it would ever just do the match entirely in the cage. Is that too much to ask? Apparently it is. Seems like common sense to me. But nobody can do it. <laughs> it's very uncommon though, apparently. Um they they not to hijack your point. No. They as I hijack your point. Yeah, you're gonna do they, it anyway. So. They they stacked up a bunch of tables outside the ring between the cage and the barricade. Mm-hmm. And they sent uh I think it was um Bowens from the mm-hmm. acclaimed off the roof of the cage through a stack of tables. And like it was as safe as you could do that, mm-hmm. but also there was absolutely no margin for error whatsoever because there's no room between the giant cage and the barricade. Anyway, I didn't care for that. I mean, and I, I, like I said, I just don't think the match needed it because to me, this, you know, blood and guts, war games, whatever you want to call it, should be about like, should be about blood. Like, and like, I don't think you need a big stunt. Like, the crowd was chanting for tables. I mean, so I guess you have to do a table spot because. That is the thing you can give them barbed wire and thumbtacks and chairs and violence and everything. They always want tables. So I guess you had to do something with tables, but I would just have someone spear someone through a table or something. Um, yeah, was not a fan of that spot. Uh, you know, the match itself had some memorable stuff in it. They tried to be creative with the the way like the tacks and the barbed wire and stuff were used. Um, and the finish is led to uh, another match for the Wembley show. So, you know, mission accomplished. There were parts of it that I really enjoyed. I thought Mark Briscoe worked crazy hard in that match. Um, him, Darby, Nick Jackson, uh, and Jungle Jack all just, I mean, they were in there the longest, I guess. So they just worked their asses off, but um, it was fun. I thought it was really impressive how little Kazushiko Okada did. Um, just an just an amazing guy to watch when he is. I mean, he had like the one big singles match against Pac on that whatever pay per view that was. Yeah, and every other show he is like in a multi man and he does nothing. And I mean, good for him. I'm not criticizing the man, but no. The only like violence he did is he got his finger stapled. That was the only thing that he did. Uh, So, um, yeah. um, (laughs) Another part of this is that for Wembley, they are doing Swerve and Brian Danielson. And there was a promo on this show from Danielson, you know, trying to build some interest in that match. But uh, it's very clear to me that the thing that AEW's audience at least in that arena that night wanted to see is swerve versus hangman. Yeah. And we're not getting that at that show, even though that feels like the hottest that's still almost a year later since they started feuding still feels like the hottest feud and would mean the most as a match. So instead you, you put them in this match and the crowd is hotter for that than anything else in the whole match. And then They're just going to be a part. I guess the hangman's going to feud with Jeff Jarrett and maybe Okada because they did do the spot where he and Okada had the shoving match and then the miscue. So uh, maybe they're going to have the weirdest three way of all time and it's going to be Okada, (laughs) Hangman, and Jeff Jarrett for the Continental title at at Wembley. I mean, that could be the greatest match of all time. Uh, From a, I mean, now that I say (laughs) it, from a curiosity (laughs) standpoint, I do think it could sell, you know, could sell a couple hundred tickets. Um, it would sell me on that show a little bit harder <laughs> than anything else has, but um, yeah, it just feels like okay, you're you're giving them a taste of something that you're probably not going to pay off until October. Next year. Yeah, maybe <laughs> yeah, maybe not till next year for all we know. So 
Um, and spoilers for a Rampage show, which is not yet aired, but whoever wins the title at uh, Wembley, Darby Allen won the the two ring battle royal to get the title shot at the uh, the Grand Slam show. So, yep. Pangman will not be the next challenger after Wembley either. So I don't know. I guess it's fine to tease that, except for when it's a thing that people want a lot more than the match you're currently giving it them, which is supposed to be the main event of your biggest show of the year. So, I mean, look, Swerve's really over. Danielson's can be a very good promo. So they've got time to make people care about Danielson versus Swerve. But right now it feels uh, like an afterthought to the thing that people actually want to see Swerve do. They have a habit of... <laughs> Not of not, I don't know. They plan their world title picture out well in advance and they always stick to the plan, which cool. That's one way to, to run a wrestling company. It's mm-hmm. just to your, to your point. Uh, yeah, swerve and, and, uh, people aren't tired of swerve and hangman. Still probably the biggest match they could do. Um, or the biggest match they could do would have been swerve and MJF. Or Swerve and uh, Osprey. Mm. Probably Swerve and Osprey. And uh, they did Swerve and Osprey at the last pay-per-view. They beat Osprey. (laughs) And now Osprey is like uh, fourth from the top at at Wembley Stadium. Uh, He was undefeated. He hadn't lost a singles match in AEW. And uh, now he's lost two of them. (laughs) And we really cooled him off going into Wembley. Like, I don't care for Will Osprey as a human being. But uh, as a wrestling character and and the hottest star in the company, that's what he was uh, six weeks ago. And it's not what he is now. I don't know. It's a yeah. choice. It's a choice. I, I don't want to blame this all on on the MJF thing either. But like, I don't I didn't get the sense that the swerve match really hurt him. But having two losses in a row certainly makes him feel less important. So maybe they could have spaced this, you know, they could have done this, the swerve match in a month earlier and, and then you wouldn't have had him lose. And then like three weeks later, lose again, but regardless. uh... And, and, and And we're doing this because it's Danielson's turn, right? And because Danielson is running out of time and Danielson is done at the end of the year or whatever. Right. And it's like, is that is that's not a good reason that's not a good reason to book the match like i'm so, i'm sorry it's not <laughs> i just if i if i believed if i believed that brian danielson cared about being the world champion one more time right yeah which yeah. again you have whatever three three four more weeks to sell me on that idea um but as of now i just don't think he cares so it's like this isn't terry funk at uh, at the ECW show, you know, this isn't, right. it doesn't feel like that, even though I think that's what they're going to try to go for. So, I mean, there's your task. Good luck trying to accomplish it over the next, uh, however many weeks, but yeah, right now, just, just because, Oh, well, he's retiring soon. And wouldn't it be nice <laughs> if he wrestled for the belt one more time is not, it's not a great reason. So we'll see. Um, like I said, they did do the thing with, with Jarrett, like, trying to tell him to take the match more seriously or whatever. So we'll see. We'll see where that goes. But I like that. I like that idea. Problem is it's like Danielson has um, shown absolutely zero signs of not taking the match seriously. And um, we frankly don't know what he knows, feels or thinks about the match. <laughs> he is. Danielson's kind of cut from the sting cloth in that I've never truly believed <laughs> that I understood anything that this man thinks or believes <laughs> in, in good ways and bad ways. I don't, I just like, I can never tell if he's, he's messing with you when you're talking, when he's talking to you. Um, but particularly yeah. since he discovered lying. Yes. He loves lying. Cody Rhodes taught him to lie. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, so that, I mean, he gave a lot of interviews, not on the television show talking about how he had no interest in, the world title or main eventing again, but he had not said that on television to my knowledge. In fact, the last promo I remember was right before the Owen started where he 
cut a very fiery promo about how this could be my last chance to be the world champion. So, yeah. Um, yeah. They've, like I said, they've got work to do. They've got the time to make you care. It's just, you know, it's it'll go down to the execution. Tony and Mariah. I loved this. <laughs> Great angle. There's something that I was thinking about, and we kind of are. We talked about this probably on our last show. The, the wonderful thing about setting up this this Tony character as this over the top comedy thing for so long is that there's nothing like too ridiculous. There's no face she can pull that's too over the top. Correct. So when she's standing there with like her jaw jutted out and she's screaming, are you prepared to die <laughs> to, Mar- to Mariah May? I'm like, yeah, this is great. <laughs> Like I was like, oh man, this is really working. But it felt like it felt like a, a really hot angle. So, um, yeah, it's good to see that that paid off and that the crowd is the crowd wants to like get behind Tony and it doesn't feel like Mariah is a is a cool heel. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, it was it was quick, but I thought what they did was really really effective as far as just making making you feel like okay, this is going to be, they're going to beat the tar out of each other when they, when they wrestle. Yep. Britt Baker and Mercedes. That's official. Yes. Via, via comic con. Great. Uh, Britt had her first match back in 10 months uh, on television this week. Look, this is a mat. This is, this match is going to be about the personalities and uh, not, <laughs> Not the in-ring work. It's not Brick Baker's forte. These are two very strong wrestling characters. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, and they're going to have a match. So that's cool. Yeah. Um, Mercedes got a heater now. She's got Camille. Finally showed up after being signed forever. Yeah. And uh, I guess she's, uh, I guess they're putting together a little faction for Mercedes. Um, okay. I, I, okay, it, it, it's fine. It's fine. Whatever. I, my main takeaway from uh, the Mercedes segment on on Dynamite on Wednesday was uh, she never looked hotter ever, and I say that with respect. <laughs> I say that as a feminist uh-huh. and in and in an empowering way. Well, never, never looked hotter. Uh huh. I mean, obviously, I didn't notice as I was <laughs> I was too busy respecting her, but um. Yeah, uh, I did think it was funny that she wore very high heels in the segment so that she was only like three inches shorter than Camille when the whole gimmick is supposed to be that Camille is a giant. But uh, it was funny. It was a good segment. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, I guess pairing up. <laughs> she doesn't have to rest. She's not going to wrestle every week. So having someone else that can. You know, have do physicality uh, some weeks will probably be good and. Yeah, I mean the the smaller heel hiding behind the big the big muscle kind of always you have to almost go out of your way to make that storyline not work. So um as like a long term project for Mercedes to do over the next year or so, that seems like uh, as good as an idea as any. Yeah. MJF has renamed the title the American title. Mm. Great. Cool. Uh he's got a mega belt now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Terrible, terrible, terrible. It's also, did they bring up that it's the the exact thing that Will did to the New Japan title last year? Uh, I didn't. Except in reverse. I did not see them mention it, but I okay. so, tend to zone out. <laughs> it's fine, but it's just, it was like that. He did that last year. He had the US title for New Japan and he turned it into the UK title. That's um, right. So. That would be maybe something you could bring up in uh and again, you got a lot of time. You got a lot of time, plenty. I'm sure that it will get brought up at some point, but it's like, okay, I guess that's why they're doing that. Uh, MJF is a, he's, he's defending that, that new uh, American belt in CMLL. And then he's defending in the UK, just, <clears throat> just doing the lowest of the low rung, uh, uh, deal by being just the the American heel. I'm sure he'll have American flag gear and wave the flag on his way to the ring. 
Maybe you'll do the old, uh, like maybe you'll throw tortillas into the crowd, like uh, Ugh. like some of the American heels would do over the years. Ugh. I think Jeff Jarrett was still doing that like three years ago. <laughs> I was going to say, I seem to recall it like a show where FTR was down there. <laughs> where the... Yeah, they should, like I, said, I think it still happens pretty regularly, honestly. <laughs> where um, it felt pretty real. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, he'll get to play the uh, international American heel for a little while and fine uh g1 has started in new japan i don't know if there's ever been less interest in um Mm -hmm. the uh almost seven years been covering new japan now um but uh it's a tournament and it's going on and they've teased like zach saber winning a, a g1 a couple of times before and uh i think he's won the new japan cup once or twice and uh it's like well they really don't have an excuse not to have saber win it this year unless you're having like yoda suji or yu yu Urmura is leading one of the blocks right now or shota umino it's like if you're not gonna go with one of their three young guys who are umino suji and you uimura you uimura i don't know why i can't say that all of a sudden then you should go with saber uh, and you should definitely not go with evil um, so we'll see what they go with the uh, what they go with there. Are you checking any G one out this year? Yeah, I have a uh, uh, I have a list that I'm going to keep. I'm going to try to catch the matches that people everybody seems to rave about to catch his matches. Um, Kim and Jeff Cobb had a match the other night that I saw people kind of going crazy for. So I certainly would like to. Um, so I'm trying to keep a list of, of things to watch from this tournament as it goes. But um, yeah, I mean, when you said there's no interest. Again, it's hard for us to judge how it is going like in that country, how that how Japan's fans feel about this. But, uh, you know, Naito's already done two jobs in the tournament despite being the champion. They're theoretically trying to, you know, build up some new guys here. But it's yeah. um, If the end result is some one of these young guys versus Naito as Naito being like the final remnant of the last 15 years of new japan still on top i guess that's compelling enough as far as a story goes it's just a shame that naito can't go no more yeah yeah that's a problem and that maybe he's playing i i read an analysis that was he's playing up how much he can't go and i was like i don't think that makes a lot of sense no 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 even if it's if he is a weird guy and it wouldn't it's not out of the realm of possibility but i wouldn't do that if i were him i guess is what i'm saying yeah without question uh tony khan also has some thoughts on uh, wwe pr um he's said that uh wwe's pr people are spreading lies about his tv rights deal and how they're calling up reporters and <laughs> saying that AEW's deal is done. They're not getting a big increase. It's going to be about the same deal they have right now. And he's like, that's not true. I don't know why they're calling people and talking about my business. And uh, just just there you go. So uh, Tony Khan, very upset with uh, that he's losing the PR war with the wrestling media. You just got to get in it, man. Like I, we talked, I mean, we talked about this recently PR as a quote unquote art form. It's inherently kind of gross and unethical, but that's the job. So I don't know, man. <laughs> and they got a, and WWE has a very large head start. So I don't know, man, he's got a lot of money, more money than the Crockett's as he famously said. So I don't know, man, start spending it on a counter PR offensive i don't know i don't know how how that would work but uh yeah that's that's the game i guess talking about it publicly is new but uh yeah they're gonna keep doing it because there's no downside to them doing it so precise good luck (laughs) good luck everyone all right is there anything else you want to talk about no i think that covers it all right, I've uh, I've wasted enough of your time tonight. All right, until next time, everybody. I'm Ethan, and I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories. 
from the wrestling life. Adios. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. Well, the times we live in continue to be unprecedented. And I'm sick of it, quite frankly. But they just keep on going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I mean, in this case, this one really did sneak up on us because who would have known that the president was old before a month ago? You know, it's just not a not an obstacle anyone could have foreseen. Um, yeah, I mean, the fact that. He hasn't. uh been able to complete a full sentence since his inauguration. Uh, troubling to some. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, as you mentioned, yeah, really snuck up on everyone else. If that's what we're we're all pretending. <laughs> so who made the call? Finally, seems like it was Pelosi, right? That's the. I don't know. That's why I'm asking. That was the the scuttle, but I mean. A lot of high-ranking former, uh, you know, Obama appointees and surrogates were calling on him to drop out for the last couple of weeks, and it seems like they wouldn't do that without the big man's okay. But there was the story that uh, old uh, old Nancy said that, it, or at least implied that she was going to publicly call on him to resign this week if he didn't so i think that's the threat of and i assume what she did everyone would have so it would have gone from the privately urging to the publicly calling stage of that and at that point i guess that was uh that was a little too much for for old joe to handle are you muted or are you just not talking Oh, I was muted. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so 84-year-old Nancy Pelosi uh, called on 81-year-old Joe Biden not to run again. Mm-hmm. Seems that way. So last Thursday night, um, Hulk Hogan introduced oh, yeah. uh, Donald Trump. at the. Actually, I guess he more introduced like Dana White or something. He was the one in a long line of carny speakers at the Republican National Convention. And uh, I had the uh, the great joy of being the one to tell uh, our friend Todd. Uh, I said, did you hear who is introducing Trump tonight? It's mm-hmm. Hogan. It's Hogan. <laughs> not Larry Hogan. No. Not Hulk Hogan. Larry. Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> and he cackled and cackled. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> it was that, fantastic. I think is that is the the normie reaction to <laughs> just any appearance by Hulk Hogan on on anything, right? It's just a <laughs> openly laugh in a in an overtly mocking <laughs> way. Yes, look I at bl- this old orange freak. <laughs> I believe that's correct. Yes. All right. Yeah. He doesn't have any hair, and yet he has hair extensions. <laughs> What? He's been bald since 1980. 